Okay, so I thought it was time for another day in the life of a bioinformatics PhD student video. Uh, it's been a little while since I've done the first one, so I thought now would be a good time to, to do another one because the work I'm doing is a bit different to what I was doing when I made that first video. So a quick disclaimer, this was actually filmed over two or three days. And so it represents what I do basically on a day-to-day -day basis, but it wasn't actually filmed all in one day. Um, and the reason for that is because it's hard for me to film stuff and actually get work done. So I kind of filmed the morning on one day and then the afternoon on the next day. So this video is also going to be uh, command line heavy. There's quite a lot of the command line going on here. So I hope that's not too boring to watch, but what I'm trying to do is show you the kind of work that bioinformatics um, students or researchers uh, kind of do on a regular basis. And yeah, the truth is that that involves a lot of the command line, a lot of looking at the command line. So you see a bit of that, but I'll kind of explain what's going on as we go along. So let's jump into it. So first things first, we really need a cup of coffee before we log into um, our remote cluster and start doing any kind of bioinformatics. At least in my case, I find it impossible uh, to work on the command line without, without having a bit of caffeine first. So this is actually one of my friend's own coffee brand um, and he gave me a free sample, so that was quite nice. So now that we've got that out of the way, uh, next up is logging into uh, my remote cluster to get my work, my work done. So the first thing I had to do on this day was making sure that my program that I left running from the previous night had actually finished uh, running without any problems, which is what I'm doing now. So because I'm working with massive data sets, um, I kind of have to leave things running uh, overnight and then just kind of check up on it the next day and hopefully everything is run without any any issues and fortunately in this case there were no problems whatsoever as you can see here it says to return success and that's exactly what I wanted to see as for what I was doing exactly so I was just running some quality control uh, metrics on some of my files so there is a set of quality control sort of tests that you have to run for each of your data sets in, um, in bioinformatics. And I didn't do that when I first downloaded my data set and started doing the um, analysis on it, uh, which was a bad idea. So I had to run the tests again because um, I needed to make sure that the data was okay for analysis. Occasionally, data is corrupted as you can see in this case here something was wrong with these files here uh, fortunately i was able to fix that and uh, move on but i should have done this at the start instead of sort of going backwards and doing it because i've already done the analysis at this point so next up i'm just checking the uh, report generated by this program called fastqc which checks the integrity of FASTQ files and the stats and other key pieces of information from FASTQ files. So I am just pulling uh, one of these um, reports down to my local machine and then opening it up on the web browser. Uh, FASTQC generates a HTML file uh, which I can't open on the remote cluster. So I have to pull it onto my local machine and then analyze it there. So this is the output that FastQC gives you. Um, I won't go into too much detail on what's going on here, but you can see this is the kind of report that's generated uh, by this tool. Um, so you can see I've got some red crosses on some of my uh, metrics on the left hand side here. But overall, I think that's fine for the type of data that I am. That's not too much of a problem, especially with sequence duplication levels. I can uh, deduplicate that later on, which I did do. So that's not too much of an issue. So after spending the morning correcting my mistakes from days earlier, the next thing I had to do was have a conversation with my supervisor. So for most PhD students, uh, bioinformatics or not, you have fairly regular contact with your supervisor. 
So, I mean, it depends on the type of student and supervisor relationship, but often they are once a week. Um, and these meetings kind of range in their purpose from just checking in uh, to make sure you're actually getting on with the work that you're supposed to be getting on with, um, to raising any issues that you might have, or uh, just updating uh, your supervisor as to where you're at with the project. So PhD projects are generally uh, steered by the student themselves, so the supervisor doesn't necessarily always know exactly what stage of the project you're at it's up to you to do the work and then update the supervisor and then they sort of guide you um, or give you guidance on what you need to do next and um, what approach you should take next with your research so that's what i'm doing with my supervisor here so one of the things you should be prepared for if you're going into into a bioinformatics phd project uh, coming in from wet lab based research um, is that you're going to have to learn a lot of new programs and software all the way through your project essentially so it will start with some of the basic programs that you need to complete your work uh, whatever that is whether it's like aligners or uh, variant callers or uh, quality control tools you have to learn those tools but you also have to learn some more specialist type software so that's one of the things that I had to do um, actually for the whole of this week that I made this video was learning a program called Nextflow. So I won't go into too much detail about what Nextflow does, but it's just a program that I have to sort of learn and understand. So I spent this entire week learning, um, learning that software and how to utilize it correctly. So like most things in genomics, bioinformatics, Nextflow is a command line tool. Um, so I'd set up my uh, system uh, to be able to um, follow along the tutorial um, on my command line. So of course, the first place I went to to learn how to use this tool is YouTube. So I was following along uh, the YouTube tutorial um, and I'm going to link uh, that below if you're interested in to know what Nextflow is and what it does for bioinformaticians. It's actually a really interesting piece of software and it might be something you decide is worth learning in your bioinformatics journey. So that all took me to about 5 p.m., which is when I kind of stop working on my, on my PhD project and go on to do other things, hang out with friends, um, go for some exercise to get out of my seat and go for a run or something. So just on that, I think it's quite important to get up and be a bit more active uh, when you're on a bioinformatics project because I've essentially spent the last eight hours in this video sitting behind a desk and that's not really good for your health. You want to get out there and just go for a walk, take the fresh air in, go for a run, um, hang out with friends. Um, and just generally look after yourself more. I think that's more important on a bioinformatics PhD project than, um, than a wet lab based one, you know, because you will, you will be on your feet um, in a lab, you will be moving around, um, as opposed to just kind of sitting behind your, your desk all day with bioinformatics. So that is it. That's about what I've been getting on with um, lately on my, on my research project. Again, the point was to kind of show you uh, what it is that uh, bioinformaticians do on a on a fairly regular basis and I hope you could see most of it was command line based work and then um, learning new tools to get work done essentially like any other um, research student uh, you have to interact with your supervisor so if you're a wet lab based student who is about to go into a bioinformatics research and you have any questions about um, the lifestyle of a bioinformatics uh, research student, then definitely leave me a comment down below um, and I will do my best to get back to you. So thank you for watching. We'll leave it there and I will see you in the next video.